Texarkana, Texas, October 20th, 1987, 11.15 p.m. Margaret Jane Chauncey leaves work in her 1983 red Pontiac Fiero. She had a feeling that somebody may have been following her, so she asked a friend to follow her to the post office. After she walks out of the post office, she waves goodbye to her friend, drives off, and is never seen again. We met up with Margaret's daughter to talk to her in more detail about the case. But the story I've always heard my whole life was that she got off work, went to the post office. She was worried somebody was following her. Mm -hmm. And she asked a friend to follow her. We're assuming it's another nurse. And so went to the post office, went in, got her mail, kind of came out, kind of waved at the lady like, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Got in the car, and that's the last time she was spotted. And they're assuming that she went from there to right through that neighborhood right there is College Drive. Mm -hmm. So there's an apartment complex over there. It used to be new back then. Mm -hmm. And she lived over there in those apartments. Mm -hmm. so. With the information that we got from the family, we start our search at Bringle Lake. So we just got to Texarkana. And uh, we only got like an hour of daylight left, but we have, we're gonna sort of get a, get ahead of schedule a little bit and we're gonna try to clear this lake before it gets too dark. It's not very big, so we're definitely going to be able to clear it, hopefully, before we lose visual. New boat we have doesn't have lights on it yet, so if it gets too dark, you can't see what we're doing. So the biggest thing with this case, 1987, and we haven't looked at Google Earth, like, pro, the historical maps, to see, yeah. like, hell, this lake might not have even been here, you know, but since we just got here, might as well clear it. But I mean, and none of the, like, I couldn't tell, like, there could have been dirt roads out here, access points that aren't here no more. So the problem is, like, we can't stick to boat ramps. We literally have to think outside the box. Check everywhere. Like, the whole dang lakes, all, the whole rivers. You know what I'm saying? The last place you have seen is by the hospital. And this is the closest boat ramp, technically. I think it's like 10, 10 minutes. I mean, as good as place as any. We got a few bodies of water to search. There's only two boat ramps out here. I mean, there's this little park. Looks like somebody's been four-wheeling. So Fiero is a weird car. Yeah, it's like and black. it's fiberglass. Oh, really? Yeah, most of it. So if we find a car and we're having a hell of a time getting a magnet on it, it could be a good sign. Yeah. This lake isn't that big with only two boat ramps. We spent about an hour clearing half the lake, including one boat ramp, and then headed over to the second one. Once we got closer to that boat ramp, we hit on a vehicle. Wouldn't you know it, a car off a boat ramp. Went right over it. Man, that's definitely, I'd say it's a car, but man, it just looks, yeah. looks old and <laughs> beat up. It almost looks like a fence. See that thing on the back? What's that? Like, it looks like a, a fence. I don't know. It looks weird. I think it's a car. It just it's, it's, it has a weird shape to it. I don't know if that's... Might be. It might be something else. Might be like a... Well, save that picture, and we can kind of compare it to the way Fierro's look. Because they had a weird shape. So it very well might be. That might be the rack that, that's on the back. They have racks they, on them? They have like a rear rack, I think. Really? I think. But we'll take a right like So we've, obviously we ran out of daylight, so we have to come back out here in the morning, and we're gonna dive that one first, and then we're gonna keep on searching all the lakes. Like we pretty much got this one clear. We'll double check the other boat ramp just to make sure. But we know we got a car at that boat ramp. It looks weird. Fingers crossed. But I mean, a thirty or plus year old. It's thirty year old. I mean, it might be falling apart. You know. It's the next day. I got off, I'm already suited up, ready to go. Now this vehicle is like not very far out here. It's maybe it's like 10, 10, 12 feet deep. Super easy dive, low visibility. Still might be able to see something. So the goal is we're gonna get the boat out in the water, dive the car, see if we can find a tag, see if it's red, see if it's a Fiero, something like that. If it's not, we're gonna make a note of it. Uh, let the cops know later on so we can utilize how much time we have here. And we're gonna head on to the next. Next boat ramps to start searching the other lakes, but uh, let's slow that down a little bit. And get out here and dive this one first and see what we're working with. So the first thing we need to do, mark this car with the magnet. And I got the buoy and the magnet and the rope all set up right now. So we're gonna go over with the sonar. I'll drop the magnet down. Adam's gonna drive, get this thing marked, and then uh, 
I'm in the water. I'm kind of excited about this one because, I don't know, just, it's exciting to be searching for a missing person and find a target. The first thing I have to do is get a magnet attached to this vehicle so I have a way to find it while I'm underwater. After that, I attach a buoy to the rope and throw it overboard. That way the rope won't sink. For some unknown reason, my GoPro died when I hit the water, so I didn't get any underwater footage, but you didn't miss much because the visibility was really bad. <sighs> Dang it, this is a lot of work. I could barely see as long as I like, like I was moving around so slow and I was keeping my feet away from me, and I was just kind of just creeping around, like you can't even tell it's a car. It's so, like, there's nothing left this thing. I found the wheels, I seen the windows. The hubcaps are extremely old. It has a Chevy ribbon in it. Yeah. Definitely not a Fiero. Couldn't even tell what color it was, but nothing red popped out anywhere. So it's definitely a vehicle, but it's, yeah. it's probably been there 40, 50 years. This river is definitely, probably the, mu the muddiest river we've ever been in. Uh, looks like it's super low and completely com completely just mudded completely over uh needless to say if i have to dive this might as well just close my eyes because i'm not gonna be able to see anything uh i kind of hope we don't find any vehicles here but at the same time i want to find i want to find margaret but man this would be a challenge at least the current the current doesn't look too bad so depending on how far out the car is, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Oh look, a syringe. That's that's great. Man, nasty. Okay. Man, I thought our rivers were muddy. Holy smokes. This must be just like straight mud. I mean, just mud. Big concern here is if, it, I mean, do you know how much this river must have flooded? I mean, yeah, you're right, it could be. It could have flooded, I mean, if she, if that car's out here, man. If it's not completely buried, I'd be pretty surprised. I'm conflicted. I, well, I want to find cars, but man, this is the nastiest water I've ever done. This is like, this is right up there with that Suburban that I dove. Remember that? Yeah. Well, this isn't at, this seems a little less current than that one, but it's still not great. Oh, just the fact I want to see anything is, it's, it doesn't, doesn't make it very fun. It didn't take us long to start finding some cars in the river. Starting with one that was no surprise, right down from the boat ramp. Yep. Is that the ramp? Or is it back here is the ramp? Right there, that thing. Uh, it's right at the end of the boat ramp. It looks smaller, doesn't it? But the Fiero is a smaller car. It is, but... Whatever that is, is mostly buried. What's the sizing? I mean, well, if that, if that, if I was gonna say that was a car, which I'm not, I would say uh -oh. three quarters of it's oh, buried. Gosh. Well, those are cars. Those are cars. And they're all upside down. I mean, there's probably three. One, two, definitely, and then whatever that is. Oh, look, here comes another one. Well. The water was clear. Jeez, could be any worse. You can tell by the expression on my face, I am not thrilled to dive in this river. It is super dangerous, it has horrible currents, and there is zero visibility. Definitely not looking forward down. to this That's at all. Dang. 
if she was like, oh, I might be followed, I'm just, she just keeps driving. So she drives down up to here, and then she might be turned. Or I don't, I don't see how you could accidentally go in though, unless it was, was it nighttime or dark or something. Probably, but there's no, no, she was, she's not accidentally gonna come here and drive off that thing. If one of those is her car, let's put that on purpose. Yeah. Once again, we mark the vehicle with the magnet, but this time, instead of setting up a buoy, we're going to bring a rope all the way to the shore, and then I'm going to follow it from the shore down to the car as a guideline. Oh my god, it's so... I'm sinking. This is the literal definition of diving in zero visibility. The water is just like chocolate milk. You can't see anything. The only reason you can see my light is because it is directly below the camera. And to top things off, the current was super strong and the ground was nothing but mud. So I had nothing to grab onto. This was truly the scariest environment I've ever been in. I was down there for a minute, huh? Yeah, I was getting a little worried. That was really hard. That was like probably one of the hardest ones I've ever done. Cause like the ground, it's it's not even sand; it's literal mud. Like standing right here, I'm just, I just I'm slowly just sinking into it. But I somehow managed to get to the car. I couldn't see anything. Everything like the car's half buried, but everything on this side, like was showing. I think I got the handle off. It doesn't match Fierro's no. handles. Yeah, they have like rectangle, silvery looking ones. And the magnet stuck to the door. Yeah. So this car is made of fiberglass, so that wouldn't happen. So we got two more upside down ones yep. we need, that we need to check. I don't know. I don't think anything else has a, a number on it. No, that handle gives it away what? though. <laughs> Falling over, I'm sinking. I don't well, know if that's a serial number or a part number or not, but dipstick gauge. FSO1. You might be able to Google that. Just dipstick FSO1, see what comes up. Might give us the make of it. It's a, it says genuine Mazda FSO1 dipstick. It's a Mazda? Yes. Damn. I mean, I really couldn't tell feeling around, but I know there's the engines in the front. I made it to the trunk. Uh, it might not, I don't know. I mean, this just says. That might be on all dipsticks. I don't know my dipsticks. Yeah, I don't think so. But it does say Mazda. Yeah, on the ones I'm, on the ones I'm seeing. That was a hard. That was hard. And I mean, yeah, you're right there where it starts going currenty. Yeah, it, was, it roared right there. I was like, jeez. The second I got to the car, I was like, oh, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so what was the magnet hooked on? It's stuck on the side of the door. Oh, so oh, okay. Well, this is... Come here! Come here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, kitty, kitty. Once we got the boat oh, no. out of the water, we That's made an want. unexpected friend. Come here, kitty, kitty. Come here, kitty. Oh, my goodness. That's a nice cat. Man. man, I've never seen a cat live out here in the wild, and they're nice. Oh, they're a nice kitty. I'm going to take you home. You look wild. Yeah. The color's like, man, is that a bobcat I'm petting? It looks like it. Like a Are you a bobcat? Right. Well, you can put a post out. Good cat. That's Super cool. duper nice cat. It's like, take me home, take me home. I'm a nice kitty. Luckily, somebody else was at the boat ramp to take him home. After we was done with the river, we headed over to a private pond that was very close to where she was last seen. So we wanted to check it to make sure she wasn't out there. We put the RC sonar boat out into the pond, and to our surprise, there was a car out there. Definitely. Could just be dumped. 
They have cameras out here though, so I don't know how much they check those. See, unless the car's been sitting here the whole time. But they said the dam broke. I don't know, I don't know. But it, it's a, it's... Yeah, I'm... I mean, unless it's newer after that. Yeah. But still, why would you jump in here? I don't know. the river, which is like... It's definitely a car. I, I, I don't have a... I mean, you can, you can even see the dang tag. In the center, lights. You don't think it's a couple of those shots you got them. Like, there's no doubt that's a view. You see the mirrors and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> got a car coming. You're getting splitter down in twain. In twain. Yeah, it's right there. I mean I could, say, I, could, I could feel it. It's not grabbing it, so I think, honestly. I just follow the rope, you should run right into it. But no, if you I get can't. to the magnet, obviously, yeah. come back. So maybe I just keep going a little more? I could try, I mean, it's definitely not, I didn't pull it over the car. The second I felt something, I stopped. So that rope should take you to the car, even if it's not, the magnet's not on it. Remember, I'll just use that rope as a guide, don't pull it, because it's just sitting wherever it is. I'm hoping it's on the other side of the car, but I think it's right there. I don't exactly know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so muddy though, dude. You're probably like knee high crawled through this crap. It's gonna be fun. You excited? Look excited. I mean, I'm excited, in a, you know, in the bittersweet way of like, we looked on the map, we looked for any water that could have a car, and then we found a car. So, I mean, I'm excited in the fact that, like, hopefully we can get answers, you know, for the family. So he's going down. The water is about 53 degrees. It's about 10, 12 feet deep. Not too bad. Zero visibility. He's got to feel his way around. It's incredibly muddy on the bottom. And the magnet wouldn't stick to the car, which is kind of a good thing because this car is fiberglass. But So he's going to use the rope just as a guide, and hopefully it'll take him right to the car, and then we'll get answers. We got a tag number, MXB670. Man, I hope this is her. I guess he's coming back. It's not her. Got a tag though. Dang it. Man, it had, it had the right shape. It had a sunroof, but as soon as I saw white. 708 EEL? 
Robin. Robin. I thought it said Robin. It's not a base around here? Huh? It's not a military base around here? I don't know. Well, Silver Camry. That's the tag. We'll look it up and see what we can find on, I mean, on the internet. I felt inside the wind, the sunroof. I didn't feel anything, but all the windows were up. But it wasn't like rusted that. We gave the local police a call to let them know what we found. Yeah, don't want to go ahead and start pulling it. Uh, our CIDs will come out here just in case. Cause so far, I haven't found anything that shows this lady's missing or that car is missing or anything. Else. Yeah. A run tag just shows expired, no warrant. So we're good to go? Yeah, y'all good to go. Okay. Yeah. The search for Margaret Ann Chauncey continues. Her loved ones are desperate for answers to know where she went. So if you have any information that could bring her home, please reach out to Texarkana Police Department. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching till the end, and make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. 